Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and welcome to week 31 of the Stash Buster block series. And our block today is called Calico Puzzle. It is a 12 inch block. It's made with half square triangles and squares. This one is really simple. It goes together really fast and I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, Calico Puzzle is another old block. Um, when I was looking up the pattern for this one, I came, I found it in uh, the book that I have of 5,500 quilt blocks. However, I kept looking at it thinking there's something wrong with this block and I couldn't figure out what it was. So I did more research on the internet and I found out that this piece in this corner down here, they had it turned the wrong direction. And I think that was just an error in the printing. Um, everywhere else shows it like this. So you can see these half square triangles are kind of following each other in a circle. So um, this piece was turned so that the blue triangle was up here, the white triangle was there. It was basically just the opposite of that one, the same as this one. So that was just a print error. But if you ever come across a block, um, which I think is kind of reminded me, if you ever come across a block that you think there's this just doesn't make sense do further research and see if you can find out if um, there was just a mistake in how it was printed and like in my case that's what it was so um, this is calico puzzle and show you the colors and the fabrics that you need to make this block now I'm making this as a 12 inch block but you can make it um, as a 9 inch block um, if you can figure out the math you know, you can make this a six inch, a eight inch, you know, whatever you want. But I'm making it a 12 inch, so it's going to be a really big block. And for this one, what you're going to need is a uh, dark, medium, and a light. The light is, is your background. And for the dark, you're going to need two pieces that are four and seven eighths inch square, and one that is four and a half inch square. For your medium, you're going to need four pieces that are four and a half inch square. And for your light, you're gonna need two pieces that are four and seven eighths inch square. And on those pieces, you're gonna draw a diagonal line from corner to corner. And that's gonna be a guide for stitching. We're gonna stitch a quarter inch away on both sides of these. Now these, we're gonna do these first because this is the only piecing and cutting that we have to do for this block. You're gonna match these up with the dark four and seven eighths inch squares right sides together so that will mean your drawn line is going to show it's going to be facing up so draw that line on the wrong side of the fabric and now we're going to stitch quarter inch away from this drawn line on both sides so i have my quarter inch piecing foot on and i'm using a 50 weight thread in my machine and in the bobbin so it's in the bobbin and the needle and I'm just going to stitch quarter inch away on both sides of my drawn line. So I'm just going to swing that around and stitch on the other side. And then I'm going to grab the other set and do the same thing. you get those two done you just have to cut them apart and you can use your rotary cutter if you want or I'm just going to use my scissors because they're handy and my uh, rotary mat and ruler are on the other side of the room so this saves me a little time and uh, energy so okay now we need to press these open I'm going to press these towards the dark fabric, so I'm just going to turn them over so my dark fabric is facing me. And then I'm going to press the seam down 
and then press it open. And this is um, your bias edge where you just stitch. So um, just be a little gentle with that so you don't distort it. And this fabric that I'm using, um, it is a marbled fabric, but it's a commercial print. And it's actually what's left over from the back of the uh, Broken Star quilt that I made last year for my, uh, or two years ago for my daughter. For my oldest daughter. And uh, so that's where that came from. I had quite a bit left over from that. Okay, now I want to trim the dog ears off because they don't serve any purpose. They just create bulk and um, they, they get in my way and they bother me so I'm going to cut them off. Which that sounded horrible didn't it? <laughs> but uh, they really, they really don't serve any purpose. So, and they will create extra bulk in your quilt. And um, so, and I find I get a better finish if I trim those off. Okay, now we need to do the layout. And so we can just follow our sample here. And I'm gonna start with the center, which is the dark four and a half inch square. And then I'll use the medium four and a half inch squares and just line those up on each side. So it makes kind of a cross design. There we go. And now we need to have square triangles. And your top one starts like that and they're going to turn as you go around the block. So um, this one faces this way, just turn it a quarter rotation and it should be in the right spot. And lay this one and turn it a quarter. Like that. And this one and turn it a quarter. And there you go. The whole block's ready to be sewn together. So I'm gonna sew each piece into their individual rows and then sew all the rows together. So I'm gonna start with these two pieces and we'll sew those together. Okay, we're just going to line up the raw edges and do our quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm going to do these one row at a time. Sometimes I will do the first two pieces of each row and then just tack on the last. But today I think I'm just do it one row at a time so that I can make certain that I'm not turning these triangles in the wrong direction. So this works easier for me. Okay. Here is row one. I'm going to lay that back on my pressing board, on my pressing mat, and start working on row two. two pieces and add piece number three. Row number two and let's do row number three. Okay, 
here's piece number three. going to press the seams open. So here is row number three. Okay I'm going to start with the top row here and I'm going to press everything towards the plain square so it'll be away from the half square triangles. And do the for this row since the seams are pressed in I'm going to press these seams out which is towards the lighter fabric which is you know we normally press towards the darker fabric but um, these half square triangles we've got points to meet when we put the rows together and to do that I like to see the stitching lines and I use those to match points so I'm going to need to see those so those need to be pressed um, so that they are open so I can see those. That means I have to press away from them like that. So um, there we go. So we're going to sew these two rows together and I want to match I want to make sure I don't cut off that point. So what I'm going to do is take a straight pin and I'm going to go right through the top of that triangle so that my pin comes out there right at the top of the triangle and then it needs to go through this seam so I'm got, I need to match up my seams and this is um, just a little, little trick that um, helps get your, your points looking nice. I'm going to go ahead and pin that in place and then do the same over here. Grab another pin and if it's easier match your seams up first butt those seams up together so that they are nesting and then uh, this should be in line. You just when you're stitching what you want to do is stitch on the seam side of that where they cross just by a thread or two, a fabric thread or two. You don't want to um, you don't want to go on the block side of it. You want to stay on the seam side of it so you don't cut off your point. Okay so let's sew this and see how it comes out. And take your time if you need to. You know slow down when you get to the points. And just watch where those two lines of stitching meet and make sure you're on the machine side of it and not the block side of it or the seam side of it. Coming again to this one and sew right off. see how that turned out and that looks pretty good. I have a nice point here and a nice point there. So now I need to sew the next row on and I'll do the same thing. I'm going to nest my seams and then when Um, I get to that point when I'm sewing those. I'm going to watch where those two lines of stitching cross. Okay, I think we're ready. Let 
up my raw edges. Okay. And those look pretty good too. Some nice points on there. So let's press the seams and uh, let's take a look at the block. Okay, my ear is kicking on so it's going to be loud but I want to finish this. Um, with these seams you can press them whichever way you want. You can press them. I'm going to press them to the center because it, there's less resistance there because there aren't as many seams in the center row. If I press them this way then I'm fighting against these seams here. So I'm going to press these out towards the center row. And always pressing away from points seems to make them look better anyway. So that's another uh, tip for you. And here we go. Here is the calico block. Here are four of the blocks laid out side by side and um, this is another one of those that if you um, turn the blocks you don't get any different pattern. It's the same and you will notice that the four blocks coming together they make a pinwheel in the center so if you make this these blocks into a quilt you will have some pinwheels as secondary designs. So I think that's interesting. So that is it for the calico puzzle block. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on the calico puzzle block and I hope you give this one a try. This one goes really fast. Uh, the only thing you need to do is make these half square triangles and then put them all together. So um, it goes really fast. It's really easy to do and you can adjust the size of these blocks to whatever you want. So I um, hope you'll give it a try. And in the meantime, I hope you are all staying safe and staying healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.